I got a whole slideshow just on concepts in varroa management. And so here's one that the mites reproduce most rapidly in the springtime. What this shows you is for the mites, which are red, and the bees, which are the yellow, if they are increasing in population, the uh, line is above the stable right here. But what this shows is many beekeepers are under the misconception that um, the bees get ahead of the mites in the springtime and the up. What this shows you is the mice take off out of the starting gate and reproduce more quickly than the bees. And they reproduce more quickly. They're above the reproduction rate of the bees for the entire season until the bees stop rearing brood. And then the mites start to drop off. But mites are always ahead in the race. Now, the higher the red line is right here, the faster the mites are reproducing. And you see the greatest rate of reproduction is in May, right around swarming season. Um, so it overlaps into when you have a honey supers on the hive and it's harder to treat for varroa. So that's why I'm looking for uh, uh, research, researching treatments you can, you can use supers on the hive. And if, you're, if you go to almond pollination in California, that buildup of mites starts in February as, as soon as the pollen starts coming in and they, and they ramp their brood ring. And the reason that uh, you wanna be aware of the mite infestation rate, how many mites there are per 100 bees is that it exactly tracks the uh, prevalence of deformed wing virus and paralytic viruses in the bees. So if you can keep your infestation rate down below that 2% infestation rate, you don't have too much virus problems. Once you get over uh, six mites in a, in a, in a mite wash, um, then the viruses start to become a problem. By the time you get to 15 mites in a, um, in a mite wash, uh, which would be right about this level, um, then the viruses start to take off and your colonies well, so many beekeepers make the mistake of waiting until the mite, the wash counts get way up here, and then they may do a really strong treatment. The viruses have already gone rampant. You already have, uh, this is your percentage of uh, your brood. This, the dark orange is your, uh, your sealed brood. This is the adult bees. This is the percentage of the sealed brood uh, infested by, by a mite right here. So once you get to that about 30%, that colony is going to be toast, and uh, it won't survive this late season mite treatment. So here's another uh, uh, couple more simulations where the uh, viruses got out of control. Whereas this beekeeper goes, oh man, look at this mite counts in July, it does a 90% reduction here. Well, he then saves his colony that he can do that later treatment there and never, the mites never get out of hand, the viruses never get out of hand. So this is critical for this to have treatments that you can use in June or July. The problem is you often have honey super stacked up so it, it makes it more difficult. And there's restrictions. Uh, so for amateurs, you got to take it off two weeks before you put your supers on. Uh, uh, Timol, um, use Timol early in the spring so it suppresses brood rearing. So really, it's only a possibility after you've pulled your honey off. Uh, Oxalic is only registered for use in the uh, early, early spring, fall, no other time of the year. Anybody who's applying oxalic acid uh, during the summer is breaking the law. Mm. So the only two that we have are acid and hop guard registered, currently registered. I'm working on getting oxalic acid registered for use during the summer. Now, a number of people also asked me about thermal therapy or um, uh, uh, thermal treatment of hives. And there's some strong statements made in the literature about getting you up to this 104 and 116 degrees in the hive for two and a half hours. And mortality of the mites in the sealed brood is virtually absolute. Well, that's from a scientific paper is a very strong uh, statement. So I was curious about this. So I've got two articles coming out in the American Bee Journal um, showing the difference. So this is Varroa, where um, uh, this is for uh, the honeybees on this side, and these are the uh, centigrade temperatures, and these are the, I'm sorry, these are the Fahrenheit temperatures, and these are the centigrade temperatures here. This is brood nest temperature for Aphis mellifera right here, right around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Varroa reproduce up lower temperature than that. They have not adapted to Apis mellifera yet. They're still adapted to the drone brood of Apis serrana, the Asian honeybee, which has brood nest temperatures about uh, uh, this temperature. When you start increasing this temperature, uh, you get over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the mites are simply unable to reproduce. And when you start getting up to 108, they start to die. Whereas honeybees can handle these higher temperatures uh, fa fairly well um, until you get clear up 14 degrees or so, depending on how long they're exposed to here. So this thermal treatment is trying to get in this zone right here. Hmm. 
So I looked at, I had a beekeeper send me a thermal device and was curious for me to, you know, get some hard data on it. So I asked around and he got a hold of uh, Mike Immer, who um, had some alcohol wash counts and he had this fantastic reduction in my counts due to thermal treatment. So I was pretty excited uh, to try it. The device name's not important. I just wanted to get something that would heat, heat up. And uh, uh, you can see the bees do come out and beard up out in front of the hive, but I didn't notice any mortality to speak of of the bees. But then I also added two thermistors to make sure that it did hold the 160 degrees uh, and also a different thermistor uh, underneath the sealed brood to make sure that it did indeed penetrate that heat to the bottom of the uh, sealed brood and uh, confirmed yes. Then I went in at 24 hours and one hive at 48 hours and dissected the brood out after treatment to see how the of the mites uh, were. So here's a patch of drone brood right here that I dissected. And here's the, the larvae and pupae that pulled out of that. And if this were a movie, uh, all these mites would be actively uh, running around right now. Um, uh, <laughs> and first row of drone brood that I dissected, this is drone brood, this is worker brood, either live mites or dead mites. The first one, there were 16 dead to two live. And I go, wow, this stuff, but that was the last of that because I went to the worker brood in the same colony, 22 were live to only two dead. And in every other case, there was more live mites than there were dead mites. So I was surprised how high a survival there was of the mites in the, uh, in the brood. Sales pitches say, well, those mites are damaged by the heat. They will not be able to reproduce. Well, if they could not reproduce, that means the mite count should just keep going down because there'd be no replacements. So here's my mite, my alcohol wash counts afterwards. And they did reduce it, but then those mites were sterile. You wouldn't have seen these lines go back up again. So they apparently are able to reproduce after thermal treatment. And then I across a really neat um, <clears throat> doctoral dissertation from a uh, lady in uh, Chile. And um, she talked about thermal death curves used uh, in uh, disinfestation of agricultural products, uh, not for mites, but for weevils and moths and stuff. And what it says is you want to, um, you look at the, the curve for damaging the produce and the curve for the pest and you see where they intersect and you look for the sweet spot. So I, based upon limited research uh, out there, I made one for varroa mites. So this is the number of hours exposure and this is the temperature here. So if you want to kill varroa mites at 106 is uh, 41 degrees centigrade, you could have to expose them for 24 hours before, before they die. Mm. You want to kill them in a short time, say you want to kill them in, in five hours, you have to get up to 44 degrees. So, th so this is a thermal death curve for the bone mite here. I have very little data I could find for what's, uh, uh, the curve for the honeybees. These were all done at, at one humidity. So essentially anything below this line that bees can tolerate, anything above this line, the mites cannot tolerate. So you look for this sweet spot right here. So it looks like it's probably around, if you're gonna do a two and a half hour treatment, about 44 uh, degrees uh, centigrade, which is hotter than the 41 degrees that I did at two and a half hours here, which based upon these, you wouldn't expect to have killed the mites. So I've already sent this off um, uh, the manufacturer of the device I tested, and we'll, we'll see uh, if, they, if they utilize this information. So back to the two treatments that I 